Welcome to this Moser online video on moles and molar mass. So we want to just take a brief preview of the periodic table and a couple of things that we want to really kind of notice on here. First of all, um, we know that these numbers at the very top are going to be our atomic number. which is the same as the number of protons. So that's equal to the number of protons. Okay. Um, so we see that it was organized in that and we have our symbols for each one of them. But the other thing that we're very interested in is the mass. And so the bottom number that we see here is actually an average atomic mass. And these are the actual numbers that you're going to want to use in your calculations. Um, that average comes from the isotopes and their relative abundance. So if we take something like carbon, which is 12.01, so we have three isotopes of carbon. Okay, so we have, oops, let me go back. We have carbon... carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. And so carbon 12 is going to be the most abundant. And so this average comes from the abundance um, and times the mass number. So the carbon 12 would be the mass number. And so we know that carbon 12 is the most abundant. And we know that if we're talking about one atom, okay, so if we're talking about one atom, of carbon, it would be um, in units of AMU. But if we're talking about one mole, running out of room here, one mole, the units are going to be in grams per mole. Okay, and so we can use both of those different units with these mass numbers. Okay, so molar mass, how do we determine that? Well, it's for one mole of a substance, and we just said that the element's mass comes from the periodic table. So those are the ones that we just saw, 12.01 for carbon, 1.008 for hydrogen. Um, compounds are the sum of the element masses times their proportions. And so we need to make sure that we calculate those values. So let's go ahead and do a couple of these. So what is the molar mass of iron? So if I flip back, uh, we're going to take a look at iron here. So iron is right here. It's number 26, and it's 55.85. Okay. So that means that iron, which is Fe, has a mass of 55.85 grams per mole. Okay, And that's the molar mass. If we were talking about just one atom of iron, then it would be an AMU. So now we want to know the molar mass of iron 3 oxide. So the first thing we have to do is determine what our iron 3 oxide formula is. So remember that iron 3 is going to have a 3 plus charge, and oxygen always has a 2 minus charge. And so we're going to crisscross those, and we end up with Fe2O3. So we want to figure out what the molar mass is for this. So we have to do two times the mass of iron, which we just said was 55.85 grams per mole. I'm just going to write grams there. And then we have to add that to three times the mass of oxygen, which is 16.00 grams. So let's do that. So in parentheses, I'm going to do this all in one fail swoop. 2 times 55.85 plus 3 times 16, and I get 159.7. Now, if I was really to add, apply sig figs and just adding these up, um, I would do 159. 0 0.70 grams per mole. A lot of times we don't have to worry about that because these are a standard and those standards don't apply to sig fig rules, but just to kind of continue to practice that. Okay, let's try one more. 
let's do one that we have a polyatomic ion. And so here we're going to have, I'm going to change colors, iron 2 nitrate. So iron 2 is going to have a 2 plus charge. And nitrate is a polyatomic ion. It's NO3. And it has a 1 minus charge that goes above there. So that means our formula is going to be Fe, and in parentheses, NO3. Two. And we want to distribute this 2. So we want to take this 2 and we're going to distribute it or multiply it times the 3. And that's going to give us 6 oxygen. So 2 times 3 gives us 6. And then we also want to do that with the nitrogen. And since there's only one of them, we're just going to have one nitrogen. Or excuse me, since there's only one nitrogen, we're going to have two nitrogens, 2 times 1. Excuse me. Okay, so let's go ahead and add these all up. So we're going to have our 55.85 grams for iron plus 2 times, and the mass of nitrogen is 14.01 grams plus 6 times 16.00 grams. All right, so let's go ahead and add these all up. So 55.85 plus, in parentheses, 2 times 14.01 plus, in parentheses, 6 times 16. All right, and I get 179.87. So let's write that down here, 179.87 grams per mole. Oops. There we go. Um, so I would say that molar mass is really something that a lot of times we'll, um, we'll calculate wrong when we're going through calculations. So just be very cautious with that. It's probably one of the most common mistakes I see. All right. So let's take a look at mole conversions. And so for mole conversions, we want to go between pieces, moles, and mass. And to get anywhere in chemistry, we always want to go through moles. Okay, moles is kind of the common, common language that allows us to do things. Now, we measure everything in mass. And so if we want to know other things about them or we want to compare apples to oranges, we have to use moles or say we want to compare carbon to, I don't know, potassium. We're going to have to use moles. So if we're going from left to right, if we're moving this direction, we're going to divide by Avogadro's number. Sorry, we're going to divide by Avogadro's number, and so um, our conversion factor is going to be um, one mole over Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay. If we're moving the opposite direction, if we're going from moles back to pieces, we just flip that. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd on the top over one mole. And just so you remember, whenever we are talking about pieces, pieces can be atoms, oops. Um, it can be molecules, MLQS is my shorthand for that, or it could be formula units. Um, formula units is going to be for ionic compounds, molecules is going to be for covalent compounds, and of course atoms are for individual atoms. Okay, if we're going to take a look at the other side, be going, going between moles and mass, if we're going from moles to mass, we're going to want to multiply by the molar mass. So the molar mass that we were just working on calculating will go on the top. And on the bottom, it would be one mole. And honestly, I use my units to help me. Um, I had a professor in college that would put in extraneous information, so I couldn't always do that. But I find that most of the time, I can still do that. And then on this side, one mole, and we're going from mass to moles, divided by the molar mass. So those are how I set up those conversion factors. 
This is just a little diagram to help you with that. So let's go ahead and give these a try. So the first question, how many moles are in 127 grams of phosphorus? So we're gonna start with our 127 grams. That's gonna go on the top. Just remember this is three sig figs. So at the end, we wanna have three sig figs. On the periodic table, if you look it up and hopefully you have yours handy there, the phosphorus is 30.97 grams per mole. So I'm gonna put the 30.97 grams on the bottom and one mole on the top, okay? Because I'm going from grams to moles. And the other thing that I can double check with that is I'm able to cancel grams and I'm left with moles, which is what I wanted to know. Beautiful, so now all we have to do is the calculation. So 127 divided by 30.97 is the math on that. And so we end up with 4.10 with three sig figs moles of phosphorus. Okay. All right, let's try one between moles and molecules. So how many moles are in 1.2 times 10 to the 25th uh, water molecules? Again, we don't have to know molar mass here because we're just going between moles and molecules. We'll use blue for water, we might as well. So we're gonna take that 1.2 times 10 to the 25th. We start with that. Okay. I'm gonna use MLQS as my shorthand for molecules again. And then in this case, we want to put Avogadro's number on the bottom. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules for every one mole. Okay. So I have canceled my molecules. I'm left with moles, which is what I wanted to know. Perfect. That's a good double check. And let's go ahead and do the math on this. So Use that EE button if you have it. 1.2 second EE to the 25th divided by 6.022 second EE to the 23rd. You may find that you want to plug that number into your, your the Avogadro's number into your memory. It might help. Okay, so we get this. Now we started with two sig figs. Okay, two sig figs. So we want to end with two sig figs. That's a bit problematic with this number because the, it's going to round up to 20. Um, so I can do 20 and put a decimal afterwards. Okay. So 20 moles of H2O. Or you could write it in scientific no notation. Technically, I'm not usually that sticky about things. So the other way that we can do that is we could go 2.0 times 10 to the first moles as well. So either way, I would probably do it this way on the top, throw that decimal in afterwards and that gives us two sig figs. All right, the very last one, how many atoms are in 54.9 grams of carbon? So we're gonna start with our 54.9 grams. Carbon on the periodic table is 12.01 grams. Now, if it was a carbon compound, I would have to figure out the molar mass of the whole compound. 12.01 grams per one mole. And then I want to get into atoms, so I'm going to have to use Avogadro's number. So one mole's on the top. I'm going to put one mole on the bottom. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms always gets long and awkward on the top there. Okay, let me double check my units. So grams cancel, moles cancel. I'm left with atoms, which is what I wanted to know. Beautiful, let's do this calculation. So multiply across the top, across the bottom, divide top by bottom. So 54.9 times 6.022 second EE button to the 23rd. I'm gonna go ahead and subtotal that in between. It's just a habit that I have. You could run it all together with parentheses if you needed to. Divide that by 12.01. And we get 
2.75, so we have three sig figs here. Just to double check, I check at the end. So I have, I'm gonna write this down below, 2.75 times 10 to the 24th atoms of carbon. that see a little bit nicer. Okay, and there's a few examples for you.